Welcome to the final installment of our customer value journey series here on the podcast. We did it. It's the last one. Um, so last week we looked at the convert and excite stage. This week we're going to be looking at the last three stages, the ascend, advocate, and promote. But quickly, I just kind of want to run through the whole thing. So we started off at aware. That's when people become aware of your brand. They see your name, they see your social media posts, and then we move to engage. This is when they're actually engaging with you. They're liking your posts. Maybe they're walking into your store, things like that. Then we move to subscribe where you're getting their contact information, whether that's filling out a web form, that they're interested in attending your webinar, and then say we go to convert and they actually attended your webinar. And remember guys, this is not where you're gonna make your money. You want them to spend time so they're not spending any money, or maybe a little bit of money, like an introductory product or service. Then we move over to Excite, where we really want them to get excited about your brand, about their purchase, so that they can move to the Ascend stage instead of getting trapped in this little loop. Because remember, sometimes people come around here and they never get to your full products, they never become repeat buyers. So this is a really important stage to get people to start buying more products, accessories, other services, stuff like that. So today, we're gonna be talking about that. And then the advocate and promote, which are very, very similar. The difference is here they are prompted for like reviews and here they are unprompted. So let's take a deep dive into the ascend, advocate and promote stage. And welcome back to The Obsessed Marketer, the podcast designed for you, the small business owner looking to jumpstart your business and learn quick marketing strategies that you can take with you to increase your sales, reach, and growth. I'm Andrew Hates. And I'm Holland Berkey. We're back again, Holland. Yes, we are. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, yes, <laughs> we're matching. We're matching. <laughs> like the exact same shade of green, like yeah. pea soup green. Green is a good color. Though. Yeah, so it's my favorite color. So yes. if you guys are tuning in, maybe you want to switch on podcasts or something. Maybe you want to switch over to YouTube so you can see us look really cute. <laughs> Looking good. Cute co-hosts. Okay, enough <laughs> about how great we look. Um, let's talk about the final uh, steps to the customer value journey series today, Holland. What mm -hmm. do we got going on? Um, the ascend stage. This is the exciting stage. This is where you're going to make your money, guys. Yes. This is where you should plan to make your money. Like yeah. we said last week, it's not in the convert stage. It's here. Yes. And so this is your bread and butter. This is your actual, not bread and butter. It's more like your meat and potatoes, right? Yes. It's your like main course. Yes. And then we move on to the promote and then the advocate stage, which are pretty similar, but there's one difference, mm -hmm. a couple differences in between both of them, but we'll touch on that uh, in a little bit. If you've missed any of the other podcasts on the customer value journey series, check the cards here for the playlist on YouTube, or you can go to the show notes down below. Yep. So let's kick it off with the ascend stage. And so this is again, your meat and potatoes of your business. It's what you want to be known for. It's what you're selling primarily. And then also it kind of goes into some subsidiary products yes. that you're also selling. And that's why it's kind of uh, designed like a ladder. If you look yes. behind us, you can see that it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to try to point at it right there. Oh, did I get it? Yeah, it. I got it. <laughs> It looks like a ladder for a reason because not only are you selling your core offer, but you're trying to get people to go up as well and maybe also purchase some other core offers or some other products that go along, like yeah, upgrades to your product. Accessories, things like that. Yeah. Or also your service as well. So yes. like, for example, say you had like a community group or a community service or something like that and you want to offer like a tier kind of level to yeah. it, like, an, like a plus version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's jump right into email marketing when it comes to the Ascend stage. How are we going to be pushing that? Um, yeah, so this one's pretty simple. You have their contact information because you got it from the subscribe stage. Um, so this is primarily just like send your customer an email in regards to their initial product. Maybe they did a really low level initial product purchase with you and you can introduce an upgrade to that product or a higher sell, like an upsell. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe even it is they bought their, your core offer, right? Your initial purchase. Maybe the, the best practice is to go months later down the line. They've already been using the product a lot. Now it's time to offer something that might enhance that uh, experience for them. Mm -hmm. Get them and to buy again. Get them to buy again, become a repeat buyer. So that's an mm -hmm. example. You could probably throw that in an email and send that out to your buyers. Yeah, this email, it's like promotion. It's promotion based for sure. Exactly. 
Um, okay, let's jump into copywriting. What does copy look like in the Ascend stage? So an example of some copywriting you can do, actually. Digital Marketer uh, explains this one, actually. It's a video sales letter, and it's kind of a video that kind of sells the product for you, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is actually in my area of expertise. Yes. This is what I do is make the video <laughs> side of things. So the best practices to do for this are, and this is a whole wide topic that we can do a whole nother podcast on someday, but this is just kind of the, the, the baseline of how mm -hmm. to create a good video sales letter, right? So you grab the audience's attention right away. You bring up the audience's pain point, okay? And why they should fix it. Then you kind of go into explain why it's important to fix that problem and you use emotions in a way. So that could be humor or that could be anger. We have a whole podcast about Fear. using emotions yep. in marketing that yes. you can listen to. Um, and then you present your solution, which is ta-da, your product or mm -hmm. service, which goes ahead and fixes that pain point. Um, and then you kind of bring the details in, you establish your credibility and authority and even prove your offer with some testimonials. And then you give a call to action to go and uh, buy that product or order that service, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Again, that's just a baseline yeah. kind of outline yeah. for it. Again, we can go into it more. Yeah. And for this copywriting, this goes beyond just video scripting. This can go with any copywriting in the Ascent stage. You want to bring up their pain points, elicit fear or anger, or give them a reason that they need to fix this problem. And by fixing that problem, it's your solution with your product or your service. So that goes for email marketing, for ad writing, um, for video scripting, all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about what digital advertising looks like in the Ascend stage. So this is a great time to use retargeting. So say you are, you sold, somebody bought a Keurig. So Keurig, they sold somebody their machine and then they have data on that person they can retarget and add to that customer where they're selling k-cups or they're selling or maybe even a holder for yes the like a little right? drawer where you can put in make it all cute on your coffee bar these are those upsells these are how you get people to ascend um and that's through retargeting with digital advertising and a good example of this is like amazon does this mm -hmm. right so you say i bought a keurig on amazon um, here on the example on screen here, there's those recommended products at the bottom. And mm -hmm. one of them here is, oh, an espresso coffee assortment, 30 capsule box of different types of things. So, you you know, there we go. So that's a kind of like, you know, retargeting being like, okay, so you bought this mm -hmm. kind of showing up again. Yep. So that is just a basis of the Ascend stage, mm -hmm. right? Um, just some different ways that you can go about doing it. Again, it is just selling your core offers mm -hmm. is what you want to be known for and it's what um, your business is all about yeah if you do the stages leading up to this well and you put the time and the effort into them this should come easy these customers these leads should be trusting of you because you made them trust you with mm -hmm. your content and your testimonials and all that good stuff um, so this is really just it's all should be kind of up here for you. Yeah. And they're already well ingrained into your, into your services and they know about you, right? Mm -hmm. um, they've been, they've been exposed to you. They subscribe to you. You've excited them and now you're selling your product or services to them. Yep. So there we go. Now from that point, we go on to people who want to share their experiences with the world or maybe are prompted to share their experiences with yes. your business with the world. Let's talk about the advocate stage, Holland. Mm -hmm. So you sold some good products and people are very happy. You got some good, happy customers or some donors. Um, so now it's time to encourage them to give a testimonial or a review and advocate your business. Um, the key here is to you're encouraging them. Here in the advocate stage, you're asking for like a testimonial or something. They're not really just doing it out on their own. You're kind of prompting them. Yeah. And also it's more about trying to market what they're saying as well too. It goes beyond just asking for it. It's more about how do we showcase those to boost their credibility and to also prove the product or service that we're trying to sell. Oh, and there's one more thing about advocates, right? So advocates don't go out of their way to spread the word about your product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll probably go and they'll advocate for your product if prompted to. So I got an example for you, Holland. Okay. So say you come to me and you have a cold, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, oh, I'm feeling like, you know, I feel like crap. Yep. I, you know, I need to, I wish this cold would go away. Got a headache, stuffy nose. It's, it sucks. You Help know, me, Andrew. So maybe one time when I was sick, I bought these lozenges. Like they're called coldies, mm -hmm. not sponsored by them, by the mm -hmm. way, but I love them and they work so well. They're like little zinc lozenges. 
So I'm like, okay, Holland, oh, I know a way to get your cold to go away faster. I use these and they work. Go buy coldies at the store. Holland, would you go buy them? Yeah. And honestly, I've never even heard of them before. So now that you just said this <laughs> and I see coldies in the store, maybe I'll buy it. Who knows? No, I'm a free, I'm a free advocate for this. Uh, no. <laughs> but no, that's okay because I stand by the product because it worked for me and I want to share it with you because you know, you trust me and I want to make sure that you feel better. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how it kind of works. Right. So let's go into some ways that we can market some of the ways that people are talking about our products. And the first one here we'll talk about is social media. Yep. Uh, pretty straightforward with this. If somebody gives you a video testimonial or any testimonial or review, take that content, turn it into a social media graphic or just post the video testimonial itself on Facebook. Let people know that are engaging with you that, hey, these people gave us five stars. This helped their pain point. It solved their problem. It could also solve yours. A good way to do this too, if somebody maybe makes a review to reach out to them and say, hey, we'd like to make a video testimonial. Would you mind jumping on a Zoom call with us and I can record you? Or if they're local, try to get them to come into your business maybe film it and then post it up on social media. Mm -hmm. And we'll move on to email marketing. Now, another way to do this, here's an example from Best Buy. So what they do here is maybe when they send out a newsletter or maybe you've already made a purchase, at the bottom of the email, they have some things here, um, some of the top purchases of the week. Yep. And they have the star rankings here for the mm -hmm. reviews. This gives the prospective customer um, the option to go ahead and read the reviews. They can already see that the product is well reviewed. They can click right there and click read reviews and get more information. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just having those reviews straight in your email marketing. Yes. So let's talk about search marketing. Okay, Andrew, say you want to buy a really expensive coffee maker. Maybe it's like the $300 Keurig coffee maker. I'm down. Um, what are you going to do first? Are you just going to buy it right away? I mean, uh, my heart says yes, but <laughs> I definitely will look up reviews first. So yeah. something I always do, right, is I go into Google and I'm like, Keurig, blah, 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 and then type in reviews. Yep. And then hit You've probably done that as well. I mean, I've done that. Everybody looks up reviews, especially if it's a higher ticket um, item, which in this ascent stage, sometimes your products can be kind of expensive here if they're like your core offer. So this is where search marketing comes in. You might want to try to get your donors, your customers to leave reviews on their website, on websites like Yelp, um, Angie's List, Google customer reviews, because this all ties into like search marketing, SEO. Um, if they, somebody types in like Andrew types in Keurig review, then we get all these reviews to pop up from previous from um, previous and happy consumers, yes. right? If your product is good, then you're they're going to see all those different reviews, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, another one too is Trustpilot. I have seen a lot too. I've never even heard of that. I've been asked that. See, that's another thing too, right? If you go ahead and you ask your people who purchase your, um, your product or order your service, right? I've gotten emails before where it's like, hey, can you review us on Trustpilot? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, you know, same similar thing, right? Yeah. Um, and so a good way to just kind of populate all of those into one place and make it easy for people to um, kind of see that your product or service is proven, mm -hmm. right? People are saying that it's good. People want to buy it. People like it. And then they can click on those, read the reviews, and then make that decision and yeah. purchase your core offer. Yeah. No matter how much you market your own product, you might think your product is the best thing since sliced bread, yeah. but, and it very well could be, but your customers are more likely to trust other customers than the business or the company themselves. Exactly. So that's why reviews are crucial, crucial. Now let's go to the other side of things, right? So we have advocates, right? Who are mm -hmm. there to promote your product when prompted to, mm -hmm. or when they're asked to. Now we have promoters and these are different because these are people who are going to go and spread the word and be kind of like a walking billboard for your brand or like a walking salesperson for the brand. They're going to be going out there being like, you got to check out this product or service or you got to check this out without you even asking them. Mm -hmm. That's me and Joel with Pango Books. I literally <laughs> talked about it last week because it's I'm obsessed with this service. It is perfect for me and it I think it works perfectly and I love it and I will I've told so many people about it unprompted. Like hanging out with my friend, there's a silence in the room and I go, 
hey, I know you kind of read. And then I <laughs> and then I pitch it. I am Pango Books walking billboard. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the promote stage. Well, think about it too. You know, Nike, for example, is like a shoe brand, right? Mm-hmm. But they also have like t-shirts and stuff like that with their just do it, the Nike swoosh. Mm. And I mean, well, now they're more of an apparel company too, but think about it, you're they're a walking billboard, right? Yep. And so that's what is really the difference here with promoters. And some examples of kind of how you can market this in a way is teaming up with content creators or influencers. Um, that's influencer marketing, which is something we haven't gotten to really into the podcast yet, but we can definitely um, maybe touch on that in the future. For sure. Um, but for example, say um, you're a sports betting website, right? Uh, my example comes to mind is like FanDuel, or something like that. Um, you get a sports betting podcast host you give them an affiliate link, and every single time one of their listeners goes and clicks the link and signs up and everything, they get a tw- uh, the podcast co- host gets a 20% um, uh, commission. Mm, yeah. Another example here is a person gets to attend a big conference for free if they get five of their colleagues to go with them as well. So again, word of mouth marketing yeah. example and stuff like that. Yeah. And when you said you brought up Nike and that they're merch and like they have like the Nike swoosh and the just do it. That's another thing, um, like piece of content that kind of falls under the promote stages. You could have merch for your website or your business. And if somebody really, really likes your business, they might buy your shirt because they're just that raving of a fan. They're like, I want to buy a t-shirt from my favorite brand. Yep. And you can do this too, even with email marketing too. So say for example, like you're not, you don't, you're not an apparel company whatsoever, but you know, you send it out to the people who are advocating for you and you go, Hey, you know, we have a merch shop now. You Mm want to buy some merch and wear our stuff. And so actually there is a very popular convenience store chain here in the Midwest called Quick Trip, actually, who took, it did exactly that, right? Took their advocators, right? And was like, hey, we opened up a merch shop, buy some merch, sold out. I was gonna say, Andrew's saying this because I think he has like a lot of Quick Trip merch. I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) But see, that's my thing. Like merch doesn't even really, they're a gas station. But I see so many people, especially in Wisconsin, wearing Quick Trip merch because they have such loyal brand ambassador, or not brand ambassadors, but loyal customers that they're like, I will put that logo on my forehead. (laughs) People have gotten a tattoo too. Yeah. So that's that's promotion. Yes. Getting a tattoo of the company. Who that's, knows? Maybe you'll have fans as big as that. <laughs> Let's hope. That's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> so there we go, Holland. We just went through all of the customer value journey oh series. Done. And in, th- in three episodes. In th- four. This is number four. Is it? Yes. Oh, time eludes me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember anything past yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's a very simple and seamless process all the way through. It's a lot to do. And you know what? It's It takes all the moving parts to like a well-oiled machine to get it up and running and to make yourself successful as mm-hmm. a business and a service, right? So if you need any help whatsoever with this customer value journey and filling out this map and kind of implementing it, that's what we're here for at Viral Solutions. Yeah, that's our specialty. We yes. know what we're talking about and we will be more than happy to help you. Go to viralsolutions.net, click the free marketing audit button at the top of the page, and then we go through this with you. We fill this out, we do a brand script, and we also fill out your customer avatar for you and kind of get you set up and bring up some pain points of your customers and what you're doing well and what you're not doing well. It's for free. It's at viralsolutions.net. And of course, we're always available on the chat box. Just go to viralsolutions.net, click that little blue chat bubble at the bottom and uh, send us a message. We'll get back to you. Next week, we will be doing October's monthly recap, everybody's favorite episode. Go. Joel's going to be on that one. You guys haven't seen him in a while, so you'll get to see Joel's cute little face again. Good. I get a, I get a week off. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> We'll see you next week. This is the Obsessed Marketer and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.